StarCraft 2 has been out for 14 years already, but throughout the course of many years the game has changed significantly. It's just not the same StarCraft now as it was in 2010. Possibly the biggest and greatest game changer happened with the release of Legacy of the Void, which affected pretty much everything in this game, and especially the pacing of a match and strategies. In this video we'll discuss how economy change and worker count affected the StarCraft II Pro scene and its community. So before 2015, StarCraft II had another economic system which could be highlighted by two moments. First, you only had six workers at start, which meant that every worker was twice as precious and you need to be extra careful with them. Second, your base had more minerals, and you also had 500 more gas on each gazer. While these changes might seem insignificant at the first glance, they meant a whole world of difference to how games are played out. Let's see how it was versus how it is now. But first of all, why were those changes even needed? There were, at the very least, two issues that bothered all StarCraft fans around the globe. Many StarCraft 2 matches felt too drag out, and sometimes it took 5 or even 10 minutes for a game to get into a dynamic and action-packed phase. Compared to other genres, it was just too long. Additionally, there were many late-game balance issues caused by certain units, meta and stockpiles of resources. You can check out our two videos about those problematic periods, mostly about Swarmhosts and Broodlords. Changing the economy was a great way to shake up things in StarCraft 2 and open new dimensions for players. Immediately it led to three distinct consequences. The games got much faster, early game got shorter, and base expansion now became the priority, which in turn made StarCraft 2 more dynamic and action-packed. It also raised the skill ceiling significantly and overall the changes were received positively. However, with every new benefit we got, we also lost some cool features that many players still miss. Let's see how things changed with time and what we lost. One of the core concepts of any artist game in the world is that, just like in economics, you have to sacrifice one thing to have another, or double down on something else. Every action you take limits your different options, and that's why decision making is so important in the majority of RTS games. I talked about that on my channel Gaming Essays, where I cover this in my guides on how to achieve Grandmaster League. But basically, before 2015, you had to choose wisely. It was simply impossible to transition quickly between build orders, and you had to commit to what you are doing. All in was a true big risky gamble, not like it seems nowadays. In Legacy of the Void, it's possible to do both tech, economy and army, while in Hado the Swarm you had to switch between those cycles and carefully scout for every danger. And the same was true for most cheeses like Cannon Rush, Proxies and so on. Well, perhaps Proxy Rex illustrates that the best. If you go for two racks, you have to kill your opponent and there is just no way you can transition to macro unless you hurt your opponent badly enough. In Legacy of the Void, almost every strategy allows you to get back to macro and two racks sometimes consider it as a cheesy macro opener or something like that. And in general, there's just no 100 risky strategies anymore. Well, maybe only four racks, proxy gates, it's not just the same as it was in Hado the Swarm. There's still always room to switch gears and choose a different track. This pre-2015 economy had lasting effects on mid-game as well. Since your bases don't expire as quickly, you could allow yourself to stay longer on a smaller economy in order to get better tech or a bigger army. It was generally harder to outplay a two-base player who had a good micro, because he had just enough resources to build above 200 supply and have an opportunity to win in one single fight. And this was one of the reasons why two-base build orders were so strong back in those days. At the same time, you couldn't really stretch yourself into multiple tech choices. Populating third and fourth bases was both time-consuming as well as risky, and you only had enough resources for a couple of choices. This meant that you had to be carefully what you needed, because that's what you'll stick with for quite some time. Now, it sometimes feels that you can slap upgrades, new buildings, bases, workers, different techs, all at the same time. It's no longer a surprise to see a Skytoss taking a fourth base at 8 minute mark, while simultaneously getting disruptors, zero charge and sometimes even doing War Prism harass. Of course, there is still some level of restriction on a very high level, and you cannot really spend money on everything, but it just got way more plausible than it used to be. Another interesting thing is that we never really had any changes to technology cost. Since now you normally have more resources, 
You can easily pick more options at the same time, as discussed earlier. Previously, choosing technology was a high-risk and high-reward move, and it was interesting to see how players had to sacrifice many things to play with certain unit compositions. There's also a love for many distinctive playstyle and cheeses, and also playstyle clashes as well. Taking the Protoss race as an example, we could see Protoss players who preferred High Templars over Colossi for the majority of mid-game or vice versa, or Void race and Sentries over other splash units in ZVP. Now it's a lot easier to play almost every unit in one single game, even if the game doesn't really last too long. With some exceptions, of course. To sum up, Legacy of the Void drastically reduced the consequences of the choices you make. Build orders don't differ as much early on, and it's very easy to compensate for any small differences later on, as the game scales faster and economy matters more than minuscule details. The older versions of StarCraft 2 had a bit more nuances related to build orders because of that. While it obviously incentivizes players to be more creative and active and unpredictable with their build orders, it also ruins the drama that was felt present during strategy choices in the past. When everything is at stake and there is no way to retreat, it was an amazing hype and thrilling moment that every StarCraft 2 fan enjoyed. It's now or never, do or die. And there was no way Naniwa could transition out of his proxy gates against Hyun, and there was no way parting Soul Train could remax after being crushed. There was no place to run, no place to hide if your choice was ultimately a mistake. You just got to face it and pull off a miracle if you could. One of the prominent things about How to the Swarm was how distinctive the different stages were. Literally, each new base meant a new stage would be game. There were many games with only one or two bases, which could still be very entertaining and unpredictable. Again, because it took longer to speed up your economy, each decision about expansion was risky and should be carefully considered against other options. It was totally viable to stay on two bases for certain build orders and playstyles, especially for Protoss and Terran players. However, in Legacy of the Void, expanding more and more and more in most matchups is the path of least resistance, and this is simply the best way to overcome your opponent. On most occasions, it's not such a risky investment and thus there is no serious consideration or thought process behind it. Also, you don't even have much time to think about it. The bases are running out so quickly that you are pretty much forced to keep growing so that you don't fail behind your opponent. This leads to several issues that were not as prevalent in earlier versions of the game. Due to how little time it takes to switch strategies, scouting becomes less significant. Since the opportunity cost is now much lower, changing strategies happens with little penalty and scouting stops being as punishing as it used to be. Even if you can narrow down your opponent's build order, it's not a game changer anymore most of the time, at least it doesn't have the same impact as it used to. Funny enough, in Legacy of the Void, you sometimes gotta face strategies you know 100% are going to happen, and yet there is not really much you can do except having a better execution. While there were some exceptions in How to the Swarm as well, most of the time scouting was the most important thing in defending anything. In Legacy of the Void, there was a time of cannon rushing with Immortals and War Prisms, which, even if scouted rather early, was still going to work, provided the Protoss player had a sufficient level of microcontrol. The very existence of such strategies hurts the image of an RTS game in a way that StarCraft 2 no longer revolved around strategy and tactics, but rather how well you can execute those strategies. And the same could be said about counterplay, which became less common due to the aforementioned reasons. In most matches, build order victories are much less likely than they used to be. All what we have discussed leads to an unsatisfactory conclusion for many gamers. These changes put more emphasis on mechanical skill rather than strategy and mind games. The faster build order convergence and small opportunity costs made the game faster and more action-packed, but at the same time these changes sacrificed the variety between playstyles and some players in the past could win entire tournaments with mind games, cheeses and all-ins, one or two bases only, even being ages behind in mechanical skills. And it's very unlikely nowadays. This is probably why you can see many great and creative players slowly fall off in Legacy of the Void. Like, for example, both Hass and SOS had their peak performance in How to the Swarm. SOS won three biggest tournaments during How to the Swarm, and not because he was mechanically better than many other beasts like Jadong, Innovation or Life, but mostly because StarCraft 2 allowed for more variety in build orders and creativity, as well as all-ins and gambles. On the contrary, take a look at the Protoss results in How to the Swarm and now compare them with 
current results and you'll see way more premier victories compared to nowadays because Protoss is designed around build orders, mind games and cunning strategies that were somewhat shrunken due to the changes in game design. Of course, many people encourage such changes for one simple reason. StarCraft 2 got a bit more predictable and consistent both on ladder and tournaments. Micro playstyle started to dominate everywhere and all ins and cheeses now do not require the same level of commitment. Again, with everything said above, I do not imply that those were better times and that the economy change was unnecessary, but it's indeed difficult to draw a definite conclusion about it. On the one hand, it seems like we lost some variety, minuscule details that made us love and appreciate StarCraft 2 more, as well as an extra layer of build order differences and creativity overall. The general complaint was that every start of the game where both players choose not to cheese would just drag out for a useless 5 minutes, and that's why it was changed, right? But to be honest, isn't it kinda the same nowadays? If we exclude some minor action with Reapers or Adepts, many macro games still have like 4, maybe 5 minutes of the similar build up before action starts. But of course, in Legacy of the Void the scale is bigger and you'll see higher supply count by that moment. Also, on the other hand, we got rid of many random moments, stale late games, dominance of all ins and cheeses, and we generally got more dynamic and interesting macro games. This is the end of part 1. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next chapter where we'll dive deep into why those economic changes were still so desperately needed to be made, despite some sacrifices we just discussed. Check out our other content, have a good day and see you next time!